Testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Welcome, NBA fans. Big J here, coming to you live from Plainfield, Illinois. Sports talk with Big J. Talk about some of this NBA nonsense going on. <laughs> uh, it's really funny. Uh, a lot of chatter going on. MVP race, a lot of comments on comments on Joker, uh, international players versus uh, American players, comments. Barkley, Draymond, Stephen A. Some responses. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's get into it. (laughs) 
Andrew Perkins. He's become somewhat of a, you know, media star with some of his uh, comments and kind of reminds you of Barkley in terms of uh, his ability to his ability to um, quote tell it like it is. You know, he speaks his mind and getting a reputation of being authentic, uh, but some of his comments to me are kind of uh, you know ridiculous. First area I wanted to talk about is uh, first came out with some criticisms of uh, you know the Joker who's having a MVP year, you know close to that if he's not averaging a triple double, and Perkins seemed to suggest that. Uh, The Joker is stat padding. Now, I think I've talked about this before, but this whole idea of stat padding is so silly and ridiculous. I don't even know why that's become a thing. I I, I know it's it really came about because of this is what people use to diminish LeBron James and his GOAT argument. So people started, since uh, LeBron has started to accumulate a lot of uh, statistical superiority in terms of his uh, stats, people not wanting uh, him to gain any advantage uh, in terms of his GOAT debate started to use stats as a negative. Now, they've never used stats as a negative before in any other player. It, it seems to have started with LeBron. All of a sudden, stats become a negative in terms of uh, LeBron. Now, you know, we know in the past, you know, there had been people that scored a lot of points and, you know, didn't win any, you know, championships or anything like that. And so they criticized, you know, I think particularly, you know, people like uh, Dominic Wilkins and so yeah, they kind of get on players and you know try to diminish them in terms of their statistic. But even if you grant that, it's still not a case where a person is adding their stats. A person just by nature of playing basketball is going to pay its stats because that's the idea behind the game is to score, pass, dribble, rebound. So this whole idea of stat padding is so silly. So anyway, Perk's comments uh, around the Joker is that he's stat padding. He used the argument that there were a certain number of games, I forget how many it was, where the Joker had on a single digit attempts. You know, I don't know what that has to do with anything. The fact that he just didn't need to shoot the ball in order for his team to win. Because remember, the Joker, one thing about his game and his triple doubles, 
apparently he's never lost talking about this season when he gets a triple double so you know his triple doubles are contributing to the success of his team but anyway so the fact that um You know, the fact that the Joker had single digit attempts and then all of a sudden he discovered that, uh, you know, he was averaging nine assists and so all of a sudden uh, his assists started to go up. As if he decided, well, you know, maybe I can get triple double, so I'm going to now start shooting the ball more. So he's doing it only for the purposes of, uh, know adding or adding his stats in order to get triple doubles now the silly like i said the silly part of this is that they were the games for example that he would shoot in single digit attempts they still won the game if you're in shooting only uh, nine times or less a game. Maybe it's because you don't need to shoot any more than nine times in order to win, you know. He's all about winning. So that was a silly kind of argument. Then, you know, dream my green. <clears throat> Draymond Green jumps in and, and they talk about the fact that uh, he didn't put as much uh, emphasis on the stat padding of the Joker compared to the way they treated Russell Westbrook. And, you know, he was going through a triple double and so people tried to, to, you know, make the difference that, uh, when Wessel Westbrook was indeed trying to stat pad because there were occasions where his teammates would move out of the way from getting the rebound in order to allow Westbrook to get a rebound. <laughs> so they were, you know, doing specific things uh, to even avoid getting rebounds you know, for Russ, so Russ got flack for, you know, adding, you know, stat padding, whereas people don't think of Joker in that kind of way, so this is where they were trying to say there was some double standing and criticism Russell took versus Joker. But again, I think that's so so stupid, so silly. Anybody that watched the Joker play, you, you know, he's playing the game or whatever is needed is what he's going to do. Then I wanted to talk about Stephen A. Smith made some comments because he had put out a list of who has the most pressure to win a championship. And on his list, he had uh, James Harden, Jason Tatum, CP3, and the Joker, but he didn't include, um, you know, Luca. And of course, he he said he didn't include Luca because Luca is pretty young. And I guess he he put the other guys, CP3 and Harden, on the list because of uh, you know their time was running out. Now, you know, the first thing. 
always amazes me is when they talk about pressure. Ooh, where is this pressure coming from? Pressure from where? Why is it pressure? It's amazing to me these analysts think that they have some some power to determine who's supposed to do what. They make the criteria, the standards, and if a player doesn't meet their standards, then that's pressure. They have failed to please the analysts. And that goes back to you know, the comments that, that um, you know, Barkley had made about Kevin Durant needing to uh, to do certain things in order to get his respect and credit from these older players. And Kevin Durant, you know, went back out and said, well, I don't need to get credit from you. <laughs> don't care what you say. You don't want to watch me play. Don't watch. So he said, you know, these guys think that they have all this influence in terms of who has to, you have to show me. Iran saying, I, I don't want to show you anything. Who are you? <laughs> and that's where I, I like what KD said in that area because I don't think that these uh, elements have any special knowledge about the game or any authority to determine who is successful and who is not. They're always talking about legacy and now he, even Stephen A. Smith uh, is going to put words in Katie's mouth and, and say that oh just because he says he doesn't care he really does. Now how does Stephen A. if Kevin Durant says he don't care what Barkley is saying who are you Stephen A. to say no he does care. <laughs> I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Pressure. Who's putting the pressure? Where why is it pressure? So you you don't win. What's what is the consequence of it? Oh, somebody's gonna say bad things about you? Well, you can see from the way LeBron is, is treated that even if you win, that doesn't stop people saying nasty, bad things about you. Usually you'll see some of the comments that people were saying about LeBron. And here is a four-time champion, four-time league MVP, and... They still talk about him, call him things like La Flop and La Bum and things like that. So, what does it mean if you win a championship or you don't? It's not going to stop people talking about you or talking disparaging about you. So, so where exactly is? You know, this pressure coming from. So then, okay, you know, Draymond jumps in this, this issue of this, this list and throws in this wrinkle that 
the international players don't seem to be put under as much pressure to win a championship as American players. <laughs> well, they seem to get a pass and Draymond doesn't understand that. Pressure on American players to win championships, but the European players fly. Now, is that a, a fact or true? Well, Stephen A. jumps in and, and you know, agrees with, you know, Draymond on that. And I'm not so sure that's the case. You know, I look at uh, Dirk. You know, the year they uh, lost to the Miami Heat, I think that was in 2006 or something like that. And he, they had won something like 60 games a year or something. Anyway, I think he was even the uh, league MVP. And then they lost in the finals. I do remember him getting flack. You know about that you know and that's why you know when they get you know, one in the 2011 you know it was kind of like a redemption for for Dirk so he did get some criticism for not winning the championship you know an MVP but it doesn't win a championship you know that's supposedly one of the standards so and then uh you know, Giannis, also international player. You know, they started to get on him before he won that one championship, you know, saying that, you know, they were good regular season, but, you know, he would never win because they figured out how to, how to stop him, you know, put up a wall and he couldn't penetrate. He had no outside game, so, you know, they started to criticize him, so... I think uh, any superstar or quote superstar, they're going to start, the analysts are going to start demanding that they win a championship or at least get to a finals in order to give, you know, respect. <laughs> Which is so funny that these let's think that they are the giver of respect as if people really care you know what they say you know they pretend to know more than the average fan which really they don't know any so this whole idea of uh, you got to do this we won't respect or even they try to say that the older players who don't respect you unless you do certain things so you know Rand even though he's a two-time finals MVP two-time championship yeah but he played with so and so So it's not even enough. And then they talk about, oh, oh some championships are, are worth more than others. So then now they're going to evaluate championship. The fact, the fact that you won a championship is no longer enough. It's how did you win it? You know, when, where did you, you win it? <laughs> well, you know, I guess... These talking heads have to talk about something. Well, I guess that's their mind. That's what they say is their their job is to make predictions and talk about stuff. I count it all NBA nonsense. You look at the MVP race, you know, the Joker is about to win 
his um, third straight MVP. Now, I think he is the, the, the odds on favor to win his third MVP, and I think he deser deserves it. I don't think anybody is close in the competition. Maybe Giannis could have the case, but definitely not MB. Now, I wanted to show what I think is one of the key differences between the Joker and Giannis. Now I'm going to show you uh, Giannis. I mean, Embiid in the game they played against uh, Miami Heat when it went down to the last shot of the game. I'll show you something. Now, okay, this is the... Okay, here's the play. Now, here is Embiid has the ball. There it is, right, right there, look. Look how close he is to the basket. Of course, he's double team. Here's Bam. Now, you would think, think about that famous play where I think it was Elijah Wan was against David Robinson. And what did he do? Fate over under footwork. Now, look at. MB, do you see any attempt to pump fake or to use any up over and up and under any jump hook any one-handed scoop shot look didn't even try to score just end up throwing it out to harden for a failed three-point attempt. But that's what I say the difference is. This man has no post moves. Look at that. Unless he's shooting a jump shot you know, a mid-range or a fadeaway, he can't score unless there's a, you know, a dunk. But you should be able to move and score. Now I can show you uh, an example of the Joker Given the same situation, he's going to use footwork and pump face in order to, to, to move and get to the basket. I'm actually going to see if I can find... See if I can find a... Tape. The Joker. Let me see here.
No, I couldn't find. Uh, couldn't find a decent clip. Mainly because uh, the last game they played, they were so far ahead. Just couldn't couldn't see it. But anyway, last item I wanted to touch base with is Skip Bayless comments about Ron's injury. Skip Bayless trying to imply that because he didn't know what the injury was, that maybe LeBron was faking. <laughs> but now he has a source. He told him that the injury was indeed real and serious. Now Kit Bellis is accepting the fact that LeBron is actually injured. And Shannon Sharp was challenging him on, well, you know, last week you were saying you wasn't sure if Bellis claimed that because he didn't have the information to what the actual injury was, still he was doubting whether it was a real injury. So in his mind, the absence of information means that it may be a fake. <clears throat> but now he accepts that the man is actually injured. More NBA nonsense. No people come to expect Skip Bayless to be like that, to talk about anything to disparage LeBron, but it's still, you still wonder how he can make anything negative towards LeBron. Here's the injury, and he's going to critical LeBron for getting in. Somebody put out a picture showing uh, Michael Jordan in a boot on his foot. You know, when he broke his broke his foot and had a cane, and of course they're comparing that. To, of course, LeBron haters would say, "Oh yeah, that was different. He actually had a broken foot, whereas LeBron only had a little, you know, a little sprain." <laughs> So, always excuses, always a reason, hey, I've kind of gotten better with uh, reading these, the negative comments roll off because, uh, you know, when people are ir irrational, reasonable, you can tell that the haters, no really point in finding or arguing sounds a lot better doing that. Well, the, the Lakers won their last game and uh, that was uh, you know, that was a good thing. They won without AD and uh, without uh, LeBron. But then they end up losing, uh, you know, the next game that they play. So 
I really think that uh, they're saying can AD carry him until LeBron gets back. Well, AD is not <laughs> did not back himself. I predicted that LeBron would have experienced some kind of injury, you know, from the beginning of the year, and and the reason is because I just understand that when you get up in age like that and you know, all the wear and tear on your body is going to break down no matter how much kind of preparation you've done. You know, always think about, you know, Kobe and how and towards the end of his career he started getting these injuries one after uh, an, another. And that's probably going to happen to KD too. You know, once you get these, these injuries, so was afraid that LeBron was going to get injured and have to make, miss significant time, and exact, that's exactly what happened. And now, you know, Anthony Davis, you know, you get, you, you're afraid for him every time he's on the court, every time he, you know, hits the ground, you're saying it's only a matter of time where he's going to be out, and sure enough, you know, he missed of the last game and so it's no way either one of those guys are gonna you know make the uh, you know play in all 20 or 19 whatever games they have left so you might as well say that the, uh, the Lakers are done for this year and you know it's okay it's funny how people say that injuries really shouldn't matter. They still hold that against you. You didn't make the playoffs. Oh, the fact that you, you know, your main players were injured doesn't mean you're not supposed to make the playoffs. That is so <laughs> ridiculous. But that's the way the narrative goes. You're supposed to make a playoff. Regardless, if half the team is injured, that doesn't make any difference. You're still supposed to make the playoffs because of who you are. That is so dumb to me. If your best players are injured, it's going to affect your team winning. It's as simple as that. That is not a knock on you. I mean, they act like a player that, get, uh, that gets hurt is a failure. You know, like you, the fact that you got hurt was because of something you did wrong. Now, how silly is, is that? But that's the way, you know, people fans, or even the analysts and the commentators, you know, seem to project this thing. Is that um, if you don't make the playoffs, that's all it. You either make it or you don't. Why you didn't make it? You know, they're talking about, oh, Ronald missed it two years in a row. The fact that the players get injured does not mean anything. So why you miss it doesn't mean anything. And if you say it's because of the injuries, oh, then you're making excuses. I mean, people are so unreasonable. It's it's really kind of frustrating sometimes. But uh, I'm doing a lot of better in reacting to this because I understand, you know, human nature and the way people, you know, think and it's no use in really arguing with them. So, but, you know, they're entitled to their own opinion, whether it makes sense or not. Let me see today's games. You have um, 
hornets and magic hawks and the trailblazers you got celtics playing the nets and you got the knicks playing the heat suns playing the bulls jazz playing the thunder and the Grizzlies playing the Nuggets. Okay, that should be a good game. Pelicans and the Warriors. So, the Kings and the Clippers. And Lakers playing the Timberwolves. Well, the Lakers probably had a chance to you know, LeBron and AD hadn't gotten hurt. They really had a chance to move up because I imagine um, you can see the Pelicans are probably going to lose to the Warriors. So that would have put the Pelicans tied for tied with the Lakers in the loss column. You know. Lakers would have, uh, you know, they're in 11th place. So they're one, one game behind the, the Pelicans from getting into the play-in. Only one game behind uh, Utah also for the ninth spot. One and a half behind uh, Minnesota, so they got an opportunity to uh, to get Minnesota. Or the Clippers have lost 32 games. But I don't think the Lakers could have gotten to the sixth spot, but uh, they could have gotten to. 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th spot. But playing Minnesota is going to be uh, it's going to be tough. So we shall see. I think that's going to be all for today. Just my opinion. Catch you next time.